This is a really long topic. Okay, what do I do? Introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Sid. Now just welcome them to Tuesdays on the Pagan Perspective and tell them what the topic is. Welcome to Tuesdays on the Pagan Perspective, and this week we're talking about goths and pagans. Goth pagans. Okay, so now I just, what do I just answer it as I go through? Well, you can read it over first and then just answer it when it's you're done. It's a long topic. Yeah, or just go through it, whatever you want to do. Okay, then hold on, I'm going to read all of this first. So this topic comes from someone who considers themselves a goth pagan, and their question is about how a lot of pagans on YouTube seem to not, um, seem to have a lot of contempt for the goth subculture. And I'll just read part of it to you, I guess. Um, I've noticed that a lot of people on these YouTube channels seem to have contempt for the goth subculture. This will be in the description, right? We'll put this in the description. Okay, so as a goth, they say they're used to the stereotype that goths are just teenagers who are angry and depressed and violent and want everyone's attention, and, <laughs> sorry, and that they're all obsessed with death and the devil, and, uh, oh, and they think it's weird that pagans perpetuate this stereotype uh, when they regularly complain about a very similar stereotype being spread about them. So I'm going to start there, because I think, I should probably say, I don't consider myself goth, but I, to use a term that a friend of Kara's introduced to us, I have goth sensibilities. I really like that term. Um, so I get parts of it, but as this person even says, um, if you ask different goths what being goth means to them, you'll get different answers. It's very different for everybody, so... But anyway, I think I haven't actually seen a lot of direct contempt for goths other than if you're referring to this one phenomena that I've seen a lot, which is that it's the same kind of thing that happens with Satanism and witchcraft, where if you're not a Satanist or if you're not a goth, but you are a pagan or a witch, the first thing that you say to people when they find out about it is, oh, but I'm not this. Like, I don't worship the devil. I'm not goth. Blah, blah, blah. And it's like, but again, like they said in this, it, that's marginalizing the people who are goth pagans or are Satanists. And so it's not a good thing for us to do. But I think that's, without actually knowing exactly what, channels you're talking about and what they've said, that's the thing that really, that has stuck out to me is that, and I know Weave and Carlos tried to get over that over the years, and I've definitely tried to, and my sister, we're all learning to get past that kind of thing where you first define yourself by what you're not, because that helps to an extent, but it does offend other people or marginalize other people, and we shouldn't make them feel less than. So that's what I've seen, is that I've seen people say, oh, but I'm not goth, I'm not blah, blah, blah. Because, like, that's what you think of, of as the kids in high school who get interested in witchcraft or whatever, they're also goth. And they might not be doing it for real, or they might be, and they might continue it later into their lives. You don't really know at that point. But, so I think that's what it, I think that's why people perpetuate it is because they're using it to say, but I'm not that. And that does give it an impression that it's a bad thing and it's not. So, okay, so they continue. The goth community has a similar issue that people always assume that they're Wiccans or Satanists simply because they're goth. Again, I think it just has to do with this overlapping of stereotypes and groups where like everyone thinks of them as the same thing. If you see someone who looks goth, you think they're a Satanist or a Wiccan or a witch or whatever. And then if someone else tells you they're a witch, but they're not goth, then you might be like, oh, you can't be a witch because you're not wearing all black and blah, blah, blah. So it's just like the wider culture thinks of them as the same thing. And so each group gets a negative pushback on both of that. The people who are gothic but not pagan, people expect them to be pagan, and the people who are pagan but not goth, people expect them to be goth. And it's just not true. So, main message here, I guess, number one, I don't know what number it is, a main message 
It's just that those are not the same thing, and those groups may overlap. It's like a Venn diagram. You might have goth pagans. That doesn't mean that all goths are pagan or that all pagans are goth, and it doesn't mean that just because someone is one thing and not the other doesn't mean that they're not a real member of that group, and just because someone is both doesn't mean that they're perpetuating a stereotype and making the rest of you look bad. It just means that that's who they are. Okay? They go on to say they can't say how many times they've watched a video and heard someone say something dismissive and rude about goths not being spiritual? Or telling goths not to kill cats in their rituals? Who would do that? None of the goths I know. Okay, that's just a, another misconception about maybe we don't really know what goth subculture is and, you know, like a lot of pagans still don't really know what Satanism is all about. And I think saying that goths shouldn't do shadow work because they're already really depressed and couldn't handle it. Okay, whoever these people are. Um, okay, so what are our opinions? What can we as a community do to be more accepting and understanding regardless of aesthetic preferences outside of circle? How can we learn not to marginalize each other? Okay, so I think, I think that a big help would be more exposure to those other groups. Like, for example, over the years... I know Kara has talked to a couple Satanists on YouTube, and just kind of like when they come up, she asks them questions. But I think, have you ever gotten answers to those things? There were a couple general things that I asked about, yeah, but I don't, I didn't hear a lot back from those people. I haven't like engaged in an ongoing conversation with a lot of them, no. But there are a couple things that I've gotten from people, such as, you know, like, this is how I, this is my brand of Satanism, or the kind that I do, and other people do it differently. So, a little bit of that insight. Okay, yeah, so things like that. When the opportunity presents itself to ask people questions, you should do that, <laughs> number one. Um, and I know, like I said, we have a friend, or Kara has a friend who says that she has goth sensibilities, and I think that's honestly, like, the closest that I know to someone else who actually identifies as goth that I know in person that I could talk to about it. So I think it might have to do with just not having a super big prevalence of those people in our lives. And so something that we could do is, I don't want to say seek those people out, because we don't want to make them, you know, like the token goth or the token Satanist or whatever. We don't want to go to them and be like, tell us all about what goth is, because that's, number one, a lot of pressure, and number two, it is individual, so we can't really expect them to, like, tell us everything about it. If we find someone who's willing to share stuff like that, awesome. I think we should take that opportunity. But I think it definitely comes from not knowing, like just not knowing enough about it, honestly. Uh, so what can we as a community do to be more accepting? I think we can try to learn more about it. That would help. Um, and also really try to just be aware of when we say things that are marginaliz marginalization. <laughs> Why can't I think of this word? marginalization, but I'm trying to say margin marginalizing, I guess is the word that I'm looking for. Like, for example, I know that years ago, we all, we used to say things like, you know, like, for example, when you would first tell your parents or, or your friends that you were practicing witchcraft and you'd be like, but I don't worship the devil. Like, that was just a, a thing to say. But then as years go by and you realize, well, there are some pagans who do worship the devil, or people who identify as Satanists, but they're the kind, um, the symbolic type, where they don't actually worship the devil, but he's a symbol. But still, you don't want to... So after a while, when you start to be aware that there actually is a community who does that, and that they're real people, and they have real beliefs too, you don't want to put them down by being like, I don't do that, I don't do that, and making it look really bad. So then gradually you learn to say... Yes, there are some people who do that. There are some people who worship Satan, or people who identify as Satanists, and there are goth pagans and stuff like that. But then if you're not that, you just, you don't have to say that you are. You can just say, I happen to not be part of that group, but that is a group. It's a valid group. Like, you know, if you want to learn more about it, maybe you go find one of them. I don't happen to practice that way, so I can't really tell you about it. But so it's the difference between saying, oh, I'm not that, I'm not that, and just acknowledging that someone else is that, and that's okay. Just because you're not, doesn't mean, does that make sense? I need to get, I need to practice this. 
How long is this video? It's probably so long. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm sorry. Ugh, okay. Um, anyway, real quick though, I just want to say, for real though, like who would say, okay, the only reason I can think that someone would be like, goths, stop killing cats in your rituals, is because, and number one, as you said, goths don't do that. That's a misconception that people just need to be educated about. Why would you say that? But the only reason I can think of that someone would say that is because it's like, okay, I watch, um, who was it? Tyler Oakley and or Davey Wavy or whatever, and they were talking about how, or someone, someone from the Five Awesome Gays, but they were talking about the gay stereotype of, um, gay men liking to shop and be effeminate and stuff like that. And some of the more masculine gay men telling the more effeminate gay men, stop like bragging about the fact that you like shopping because you're making the rest of us look bad. Like, no, that doesn't make you look bad at all. It's just you're insecure about where you are in your place in the community and you feel like you need to tell other people not to do that. So the, that's the kind of thing I'm thinking. Where the only reason someone would be like, oh, you goth people or you satanist people need to stop act sacrificing animals, not that they do. But I think the reason people would say that is because they think that it's going to be applied to them because of the way that society overlaps the groups and can't seem to differentiate. You know, if I don't want to be looked at as someone who does sacrifice, then I don't want someone who looks like me to do sacrifice because then people will think that I do the same thing that they do. That's the only reason I can think of people saying things like that. I've never heard anything about goths not being spiritual. I mean, and I guess that's tr possible. Some people could be goth for the aesthetic and not be spiritual or religious. That's true. There are probably goths who are not particularly spiritual or religious. But that doesn't mean that all goths are not. So, overall, yeah, it's just people need to be more aware about what the groups are and who's actually in the groups and that um, just because one person is not this doesn't mean another person. I'm repeating myself, I'm sorry. So the last thing that I want to say is that um, this person uh, gave us extra information and they said that they are in the last semester. Oh, they might be done now. This might be an old topic. Um, that they were in the last semester of getting their master's degree. Congratulations. And I really like, um, they explained how they, they keep their dark aesthetic when they're teaching so that their students can get an impression of a goth person. And they said that their students um, say that they don't seem like a real goth because they're too cheerful and friendly. So it's exactly that kind of thing. And I give you props um, by literally teaching by example by teaching in dark clothes. I think that's really cool. I feel like I need to wrap this up. It was so long and I feel like it was rambly. But basically it's the same thing. Whatever group you're in, there are stereotypes about you and you don't want other people assuming those things about you. So what we need to do to use more inclusive language, if we don't want people to assume things about us just because it's a stereotype, then we should, tr we ought to try, that's still language. Should. 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 That word. It's problematic. I know. It would behoove us to try and be aware of when we are generalizing other people. If we don't want people to assume things about us, we should try. It would be good for us to try not to assume things about others and put stereotypes on them. There may be people who fit the stereotype, and that's okay. It doesn't actually have anything to do with you. What we need to do is educate people about the differences between individuals and the differences between groups and what each thing actually is, instead of just letting them watch TV and assume that everything they see on Buffy is correct. Or, you know, any other, any other show. What's popular Supernatural. now? Supernatural. Thank you very much for um, letting me be a guest this week, Kara. Thanks. And I will... I don't know when I'll see you guys again, but thank you. And um, you'll see Kara next week. So, bye.